Amen. Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. It just feels wonderful. It feels awesome. Amen. And the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place tonight. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is in this building, in our midst tonight, according to the word of the Lord. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them also. Amen. His name is Jesus tonight. Praise the Lord. Love you, Jesus. Well, let's worship him tonight. Let's magnify the Lord. Everybody can praise God. The Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Everything. Everything. That's you. There was not there was not a stipulation on on what what organization you belong to or don't belong to. There wasn't a stipulation on what type of person you were or what tribe or nationality. It just said everything. Everything that had bread. Man, I'm breathing tonight, so I'm going to praise the Lord. I have plenty to be thankful for. Amen. In this season of thanks, I have plenty to be thankful for. Hallelujah. You know what? We can choose to dwell on the negatives of our life, or we can choose to dwell on the blessings and the positives of our life. Not everything is like I want it tonight in my life. Amen. I'm not, I'm not excited tonight to have cerebral palsy. But I am thankful, Sister Wendy, that the cerebral palsy didn't do more to me than, than at what it could have done. Most people with cerebral palsy are in a wheelchair, not able to move, not able to speak. Man, so I am thankful for some things tonight. I'm glad to be in church. There are some places in this world where they can't go to church. Amen. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let's do that tonight.
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That is another reason why we baptize like we do. Mr. Wendy, he said, whatever you do in word or deed, Thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel such a sweet presence of the Lord. Man, there's no telling what God will do in this place. I, I really believe the Spirit of the Lord is strong in this place. We may very well witness a miracle tonight. We, we may very well see the phenomenal hand of God in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody may get a blessing tonight, amen, that they've been needing for a long time, hallelujah, hallelujah, without a doubt tonight, we're going to get a visitation from the Lord, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I love you, Lord.
Has the Lord been good to you? Amen. Has God been good to us? Hallelujah. The Lord has been so very good, so very kind. He's been more merciful to me than I deserve. Amen. He's been so gracious to go ahead and give me a blessing that I did not deserve. to be thankful for. Amen. You know what? I should have been dead a long time ago. The doctors even stated so. Amen. That I should not live. Told my mom to get everything in order. Yeah, that's what was said about me. But God but the Lord God had a calling on my life, a purpose. Amen. I want to walk with him tonight. Brother James, I haven't done everything right and perfect. Man, I like to think of myself as a good person, but not everything I've done has been good. Amen. There's some things I wish I could take back undo there's some habits that I wish I'd never formed oh Lord help me Jesus but I'm here tonight in the presence of the Lord because of his mercy and because of his graciousness that he did not finish with me way back when when he could have Man, the patience of God is sometimes it's unexplainable, but I'm thankful for it. I feel the Holy Ghost. Will you just love Him right now? Will you just talk to God? Come on, we're not asking you to do cartwheels or run the aisles or. We're not asking you to do anything. Just talk to God. Will you just be thankful to Him for right now, just for the next moment or two? Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, let's love him one more time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. Amen. But I also feel the need to preach. Amen. Mighty God, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm glad for what I feel in this house. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can, amen. You can make your way to your seat tonight. Hallelujah. So glad everybody's here tonight. Lord, we praise you, God. We praise you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, since it gets dark earlier, it feels like it's so much later than it is. And, uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Felt like we had a good service this morning. And, uh. Felt the presence of the Lord, amen, dealing with some things this morning, amen. I, I'm glad I know the truth, amen. It's, it's not my truth, as some politicians might use that phrase, amen. It is the truth, amen, the truth, praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm thankful for the truth. Amen. I'm glad I know who God is. Amen. And he has a name. God has a name. Amen. His name is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, amen. Brother Joy, if you will, help us take up the offering tonight, and uh, we'll get that out of the way. Amen. We haven't had <coughs> church in a, you know, other than this morning, it was a full week, and so it feels like we got to do some catching up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When we, when we say that Jesus is our, everybody's heard the phrase, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Ain't nobody disagree with that. It doesn't matter which church you go to, Christian church, you claim that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, everybody's going to say amen, pat you on the back and be glad for you. Isn't that right? Because Jesus is the Lord and Savior. Amen. Good to have my cousin here tonight, Raina and Mike. Good to have you. Brandon, uh, good to have him on the front row here tonight. And uh, now you're going to have to help me. This is grandson, right? Yeah. Okay, which which child is how's the grandchild? Uh, this is Stephanie. Stephanie's your mom. All right, that's what I was wanting to know. <laughs> I didn't know if he belonged to Stephanie or Brian or Katrina. Or, uh, so yeah, Stephanie. Amen. Well, we're glad he's here and he's been learning about God. He's been uh, talking about the Bible, and I think he's got a few things figured out already. And. Uh, and so we was, uh, this morning we had a discussion about, you know, the holiday, and uh, and I didn't know, and he, apparently he had a, co a conversation after church about the same thing, so he um, had a lot of questions for me, he said, so maybe we'll get to answer some of those questions later on here tonight, but um, I don't know which one... 
there was another grandchild or great grandchild that had a question about uh you know one god and and or three gods yeah and and Baylor and and maybe even Brandon here but uh, uh so again and sister smith you may have to go help uh her find these scriptures amen in in that Cause we want we want the truth to be preached tonight. We don't want no nobody to have an excuse. Amen. Jesus said, "Are we all agree that Jesus is the Lord and the Savior?" Amen. He is the Lord and He is our Savior. Um. But now. The Bible says in in Isaiah, now, you got to understand, the Old Testament, we call him God the Father, right? Jehovah, Yahweh, you know, things like this. And th this is not my message here tonight, I just want, just want to throw this out here for, uh, just, just for a moment here. Um. Because I do have a message from God that, to give you here tonight. But uh, in the Old Testament, we call him God the Father. In the New Testament, we call Jesus the Son. And then after Jesus went up into heaven, uh, after he rose from the dead, on the day of Pentecost, he sent the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So we have Father, we have Son, we have Holy Ghost. And, and uh, you know, so the world uh, has come up with the, the Trinity, God did not come up with the Trinity. The world did. And so, if Jesus is the Lord and Savior, then, uh, Brother James, if we go to Isaiah 45 and 21, tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from the ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a, and a Savior. And there is none beside me. Well. Hosea 13, 14 says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. Jesus is the Lord and Savior, he had to have been beside God the Father. But God the Father in the Old Testament is stating very plainly and very clearly that beside me there is no Savior. And so just wanted to throw that out there to you tonight. Amen. God himself came down from heaven because he was, he is a spirit and a spirit can't die for the sins of man. So he had to become something that could die. He had to become flesh. He had to become man. So he came down to earth and was born of the Virgin Mary. Amen. And became Jesus, the Savior. And so Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is also the very same God that said... In Hosea 13, 4, that the, beside me there is no Savior. Jesus told the, the Pharisees, they got into a, 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 they got upset because he said, they said, you're not 50 years old. How do you know about Abraham? Were you there? Jesus, you know, of course, he, pop, he comes up and says, well, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> that really set them off. So, um, I'm just going to throw these things out there to you. Maybe, maybe let you think about it and chew on it for a little bit. The angel that came in to Mary and said, you're going to have a baby? That same angel told Mary that, uh, uh, you know, she was confused because she said, well, I'm not even married. I don't even have a husband. Man, how can I have a baby? 
She wasn't wrong, was she? But the angel said, the child that will be in you is of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the father of the child Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, so anyway, just wanted to put that out there. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Ephesians 4 and 5 says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. There's only one God, there's only one doctrine, and there's only one way to be baptized. That's what that scripture just said. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. So, that was a pre-message. <laughs> Amen. I do need to preach what the Lord put on my heart. And, uh, and so, um, we are going to go to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Also in the book of Job, Job declared that God alone treadeth upon the waters. You know what treadeth means? He walking on the waters. <laughs> and who came to the disciples out on the sea walking on the water? God alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Ephesians, I mean Philippians. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, somebody say the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are uh, just, and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, help me pray, and we'll let you be seated. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for the word tonight, God. Help me to preach what you've laid on my heart, God. God, help me, Lord, to be a blessing to your people, to those that hear this word tonight. Let them receive it and obey it. In Jesus' name, I ask you to bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. How many of you just love living in chaos? Ain't nobody going to raise your hand, I see. Whew. How many love just to have a bunch of drama? Whew. Ain't nobody going to raise your hand, I see. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you don't like drama and you don't like chaos. Amen. Well, if that's the case, then you probably don't like stirring something up. Right? You ever met anybody that you thought did? <laughs> don't, hey, this ain't no trick questions. <laughs> Amen. Don't, uh, don't shut down on me. Amen. Don't be, don't be afraid. Amen. We've all met folks that we thought, my goodness, if they ain't got their finger in something stirring it up, they're just not, they're not happy. Amen. Everybody knows that one person that, um, knows how to get on the phone. 
and call everybody they know about something that nobody should know, right? That creates chaos. That creates trouble. Amen. That creates problems and, and drama. Amen. But the Lord is, is speaking about peace tonight in the scripture. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. He goes on to tell you what things you should think about, what thoughts you should dwell on. Amen. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like to be the kind of, I wouldn't want to be. I thank God I'm not the type of person who automatically thinks the, the worst case scenario of everything. Amen. I feel like that's chaos. Amen. I'm glad that I don't operate out of a spirit of fear. Although I have been afraid before. Amen. And we talked about Mr. Webb MD the other day and how you can go to Google your symptoms and find out you're terminally ill. You ain't got but a few days left to live. <laughs> All because the symptoms was interpreted by Google <laughs> and, the, and the internet doctors. Amen. That's not something... You know, that, that creates fear and chaos. Amen. And so, um, you know, you're, you're instructed and encouraged not to go to uh, the Internet for your solutions. Amen. For your health answers. Or for any of those kind of answers. Amen. I would caution you about using the Internet. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is a peace of God which passes all understanding. You ever seen somebody that just looked like they nothing bothered them? Seemed like they could never be rattled? Man, uh, somebody that their answer was, well, we just need to pray about it. Well, we just need to trust God. Amen. And sometimes you hear those answers and it frustrates you because you think, the sky is falling. How can you trust God? Everything's turned upside down. And all you can say is just put your faith in the Lord. Amen. You know what I mean? And there's, there's, just, there's just chaos and, and, and turmoil in that individual. Amen. That don't want to have their faith in God. Amen. The children of Israel cried out. To Moses, you brought us out here in the wilderness. The Red Sea's in front of us. The wilderness is to the, uh, you know, all around us. And, and Pharaoh's run up behind us, ready to catch us. What do we do? What do we do? And Moses, all you can say is stand by and see the salvation of the Lord. Nothing happened, and then Moses begins to cry out. And God said, why are you crying to me? You got the rod in your hand. Stretch it out over the sea. Isn't that what he said? And so Moses did, and what do you know? The waters parted. Not only did they separate Brother James, but they walked across on dry ground where the, where the sea had just been moments ago. Praise the Lord. And so when you walk through the Red Sea and God does a miracle for you like that, you ought to be able to live in peace the rest of your life. Amen. Knowing that God is able to take care of you. How many know God's able to take care of us? Amen. God is well able. Amen. Numbers uh, 626 said, The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God wants us to be settled and at peace. Amen. 
You don't want us running around like chickens with their head cut off, man, so to speak. God don't want us to be uh, full of drama. It's not the will of God. Oh, my goodness, it's not the will of God to be scared of every little thing that happens. Praise the Lord. It's not the will of God for us to uh, uh, wring our hands in despair. That's not the will of God. It's not the will of God for us to sit and think about it and, and muse on it and, and worry ourselves to death. That's not the will of God. Worrying is not the will of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, Job 34 and 29 said, When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against the nation or against the man only. Everything's in the hands of God. Man, when God shut that door to the ark, Noah couldn't open it. Amen. And God is the one that opened the ark. He meant everything's in the hand of God. Now you say, well, why did God allow this? And why did God allow that? He meant, now you're starting to talk about an area, he meant, that you must, you, you must be careful with, but you don't charge God foolishly. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's just like this, this uh, uh, sickness business. Amen. And disease. Amen. Come on. All the problems of man, even death itself. Is because Eve had to take a bite of a fruit that she was told not to eat of. And thereby sin entered into the world. And because of sin, Romans 6.23, somebody quoted, For the wages of sin is death. Amen. And so by sin, man was destined to die. Amen. But because of sin, one man died that we might all live. And that we might all have the peace of God. Amen. There's nothing more, there's nothing worse than you going to bed at night not having peace in your mind. Amen. Because of the sins of your life and the burden that you're under. Because of the load of sin. Come on, the grief that's there. You don't even realize it's there. But the moment you realize and God is saying, I'll take that burden off of you if you just repent. If you'll just change your mind about it. If you'll just look to me and begin to walk in the ways of righteousness and peace. Amen. It's then that that burden of sin is lifted off of you. God has forgiven you. My goodness. And now, because of forgiveness, you can sleep in peace. I'm telling you what, God's got ex-drug addicts in his kingdom. God's got ex-alcoholics in his kingdom. God's got former thieves in his kingdom. Amen. God's got former fighters and brawlers in his kingdom. Amen. God's got people that have bad potty mouth. Amen. Filthy language used to be in, in his kingdom. Amen. You know what? And they're walking tonight with their head held high. Come on. And they ain't slumped over by a burden uh, of the detestable human being that they used to be. Amen. They're walking upright uh, saying, you know why I can lift my head? Because God Almighty uh, heard my voice uh, when I cried out to him and said, God, forgive me of all my sins. That's why we can sing. I don't talk like I used to talk. Why? Because he made the difference. I don't walk like I used to walk. Why? Because he made the difference. I don't live like I used to live. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 29, 11, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Right. Amen. If there's chaos in your house, 
If there's chaos in your family, it's not of God. It should not have been there. It should not be there. And it didn't come from Jesus. What you need is an insertion of the Holy Spirit. Come on, the Holy Ghost. You need God to just take over and take control. You see, I get in trouble. You get in trouble when we take control. Oh, yeah, come on. The moment I start doing what old Brother Smith wants to do, then Brother Smith starts having problems. Amen. (laughs) Come on, when Brother Smith starts doing what he wants to do, come on, then my faith gets weak. (laughs) Well, praise the Lord. And that old devil starts laughing and mocking. See, (laughs) you thought you were, well. (laughs) And there ain't nothing I can do but say, God, I messed up. (laughs) God, forgive me. God, go ahead and have your way again. If you'll just have your way, God, I won't won't be in such chaos. Has anybody, you know what I'm talking about, has anybody in here said, well, I'm glad I let the Lord handle that because I was about to make a mess of things. Yeah, and so therefore you just experienced the peace of God. You know when you got the Holy Ghost, I, it doesn't matter if the, if the electric bill is due tomorrow. God can have it paid, amen, tomorrow. Amen. Well... And so God is able to do it. God is able to meet our needs. You know God doesn't meet your needs according to what you're worthy of. God said he knows what you need before you even ask it. In the book of Matthew he said don't think about clothes. Don't think about food. Don't think about water. He said, don't worry about it. Take no thought for the morrow. You know what he's talking about? He's not talking about, well, we shouldn't make plans. That's not what he's talking about. Come on, he's not telling us to just throw caution to the wind. What he's saying is don't worry about it. Don't fuss over it. You need peace. You need peace in your life. Amen. You need peace. Amen. In your life. Isaiah 48 and 18. That oh that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river. And thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Amen. If you just listen to my commandments. And see, we think that this living for God thing is an option. Uh Uh-oh. Well, I can live for God if I want to. And if I don't want to, I don't have to. Oh, really? Then don't expect peace. Don't expect things to just work. Well, I know it rains on the just and the unjust. Amen. Well, praise God. It, it, it rains at my house. It rains at your house. Right. Amen. When I need a rain for my crop at home, my watermelons, guess what? The neighbor gets a cro- uh, rain on his crop. Whether he's wicked or whether he's righteous. Because it rains on the just and the unjust. Amen. When it rains. But you know what the difference between a sinner and a saint is? One's forgiven. I'm still human, Sister Diane. Oh, I still got to deal with things. Amen. I still got to, I still got to, I got things to work on. Amen. But I've got a God helping me. (laughs) Come on. The name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous runneth into. 
and are safe. Uh, I've got somebody I can depend on. I've got somebody that will bail me out. I've got somebody that will get me from this life to that life. Amen. And we said it this morning. I'm going to say it again here tonight. You cannot go to heaven without the Spirit of God. You cannot go to heaven without being baptized. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. And baptism is not the sprinkling of water. That's a shower. <laughs> Amen. But baptism is when you, when you go down in the water and your whole body is submerged. Oh, but, but there's another catch to it. Not only do you have to be baptized in water, but you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. For the remission of your sins. Read it. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of your sins. Oh, and after that, you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! You just got it all taken care of. Well, Brother Smith, you don't understand my life. You don't understand where I've been. You don't understand what I've done. You don't understand what I've become. You don't understand all, everything about me. You don't know, like, I, I'm telling you, God wouldn't want somebody like me. I'm telling you right now, God came to this earth to die for you. And me. And him. And her. Woo, hallelujah. I don't have to understand where you've been. I'm not the one forgiving you. I don't have to know what all you've done or where all you've been. I don't have to know everything you've done to your body or what you put in it or anything like that. Well, what I've got to do is let God work on you and let God forgive you. I'm not the one forgiving you, and I'm not the one to judge you. Woo. That's like me saying somebody can't come in here if they have a tattoo. Uh-oh. Well, I can take you to Leviticus 19 where it talks about putting no ink upon your body. But what's done is done. You ever tried to take one off? <laughs> From what I know, it's real tough. And, and before, it was impossible. <laughs> well, praise God. You know, that's like saying somebody that's ever told a lie can't come in here. Well, we'd all have to make an exit. Somebody with a bad spirit can't come in here. Well, we'd all have to go. Lying, cheating, stealing, all kinds of stuff. We've, we've done it all, have we not? Oh, don't be self-righteous tonight. Man, you've cheated, you've lied, you've stolen, you've backbited, you've been bitter, you've been hateful. I'm preaching to you tonight. You've done it all. You've been around the block. Woo! But you know what? One of those blocks you went around one time, you saw an altar and said, hey, I'm going to make a pit stop right here. And I'm going to get rid of all this burden. And so now, Brother Aaron, you have peace about your past. Woo! And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Mm. Oh, don't you fuss about the journey of life. God's got you right where he wants you. God didn't bring me here. I brought myself here. Yeah, right. You, you, God's beating that heart of yours. Now, you can take a breath and hold it, but you can't control the beating of your heart. 
but I know who can. Hallelujah. This is why we ought to live right. I mean, Brother James, this is why we ought to want to live right. At any given moment, God can stop the heart from beating. You're done. Woo! So let's, let's figure out a way to find out what good we can do, not what evil we can get into. Oh, let's find out the ways of God. Not the ways of wickedness. You see, but wickedness is fun. Huh? Come on, sin is fun. The Bible says sin is fun, but it don't last. I'm talking about something tonight. The Holy Ghost will last. Yes, sir. It's eternal. Yeah. yeah, it's a gift of God. Right. For the wages of sin is death. Right. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Through Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, is this all right? Yeah. Amen. I'd preach whether you thought it was or not. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 48 and 22 said, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Unto the wicked? That's somebody who wants to be in sin. That's somebody who just loves doing what they're doing. Now, come on, let's be honest. Have you ever... Saint of God, listen to me. Have you ever found yourself doing something you ought not to do? And then you felt terrible about it? Oh, Lord, how would I get into this? Lord, this is not what I want to be. I don't want to be doing this. How did I get myself into this mess? See, that's the kind of person God wants to work with. Mm-hmm. See, I got this problem with people that you throw around the word hypocrite. I don't like, you ought not use the word hypocrite unless you know what it is. A hypocrite is somebody that knows to do right but chooses to do the wrong. That's a hypocrite. Somebody that knows to do right and don't realize they've done wrong is not a hypocrite. Oh, hallelujah. And God has a hard time working with a hypocrite. But he don't have a hard time working with somebody who don't want to be in sin. And so he sends the Holy Ghost. And then, then there's this thing called repentance. And you get it all out of your system. And you, and you revert, you convert back to the the obedience of Christ and there's something settles over you it's the peace of God hallelujah I'm telling you what you just need the peace of God in your life at home families now look if you've done raised your children and they're grown and they're out of the house you're probably not going to be dealing with rebellion much. Amen. But you got kids at home, you got to deal with the thing called rebellion. Now, they don't want to purposely be rebellious, but they sure don't want to do what you ask them to do. And you see, we had this discussion this morning about how nice it would be for them to do things without having to be asked or told. Wouldn't that just be wonderful? Yeah. That'd be so peaceful, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and let the peace of God rule <laughs> in your hearts. Well, amen. I mean, why well, we'd change the world if our kids would just automatically want to go to the right thing. Instead, hey, go clean your room. Man, this room's chaos. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll shove it all under the bed. Now, it might look better, but it ain't right, is it? Huh? 
And so us as parents, we think, oh, if they just had it in them to do the right thing. If they would just put their shoes where shoes go and clothes where clothes go and the pillow where it goes. Amen. I mean, if they would just have it in them to do it. Is this right? How many has had your children sweep the floor? Well, I mean, I know Alec and Levi are going to have trouble with doing that right now. But Now, now just, just bear with me. Is it getting too late? I'm going to preach, okay? Look, you got, the, you got the floor sweeping going on. And I mean, I've had, to, I've had to show them how to sweep. You don't just start sweeping, you know. You got to start over at the edge of the room. Sweep all around to the middle. Is this right, ladies? I'm telling you. And so you just kind of work your way to the middle or you find your way to the spot where you want to pick it all up. Right? You already know. Now, now see, if, if kids just had it in them to do right, boy, it'd be so great. So now you got this pile of dirt in the middle of the floor. It may have socks in it. It may have hair bows in it. It may have bobby pins in it. It may have G.I. Joes in it. You got to go through the pile, right? I am in the right place. Am I talking? Okay. And so you got this, you pick it all up, and, you, and all you got left is a pile of dirt and hair. In my house, it's mostly hair. I got, I got a lot of hair in my house. And so, and I'm going to have to embarrass Judah here tonight, because he was the first one child that I had, so he's the first one got to learn how to sweep. So, he's got this all piled up here, and he's got the dustpan, and he's sweeping it up into the dustpan, and I'm telling him, now look, you got to scoot the dustpan back a little bit, and sweep some more, and you got to scoot it back a little more, and you sweep until you get all the dust up, right? Am I still doing good, ladies? All right. And so now he's got this dustpan, I mean, it's overflowing almost, with the amount of dust and hair. You can make a wig with the amount of hair. Brother James, now I don't know what got into him at this moment, at this juncture in his life. But he had the, he had the bright idea that he could take the dustpan from here to way over here, where the trash can is without spilling it. And I'm thinking, come on, man. But I forgot. It's not in him to do the right thing. Because <laughs> he don't know. He <laughs> don't know. It's the first, first time operating a heavy equipment like this. But since then, I'll rename it a little bit, Judah. Since then, he's learned, although we did have one hiccup yesterday, <laughs> about bringing the trash can to the pile. Yeah? Because then you just pick it up, dump it in, and shake it off. They always forget that part. And, and, and so anyway, if children just had it in them to do Everything right. Woo. Says, Haley, you ever had to sweep? You do it right? I just showed you how to do it, so you ought not have no more problems. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and next service, we'll learn how to mop. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, it, don't mop yourself into a corner. Amen. <laughs> right? There's just some things that God is looking at us and saying, oh, if they just had it in them to do right. But, but there's a thing in us called the, 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 the nature, the sin nature. Well, we, we know how to get in trouble. Man, 
that, I mean, we know how to get in trouble. As, as young people, as teenagers, boy, we'll go, chasing the, we'll go chasing after boys and girls. And when, well, praise God, we ought not be doing that. Hallelujah. But there's something in us, right, that just drives us to not necessarily do the right thing. But there's a way out of that too, Brother Aaron. My goodness, when you when you feel like going in the wrong direction, oh, and that old flesh, it'll make you want to do that. There, there's a solution. It's it's right it's right here. It's right here. Lord, now you see what I want to do. And I, I'm afraid, God, if I do what I want to do. I'm, I've already been proven to not make good decisions when I when I get my when I get my thoughts involved and my wants and my desires. But God, if you'll just have your way in me, Amen. Oh, come on! There's such a peace that comes with it. Hallelujah! Come on, so that when you listen to God, listen to me, young people. If you'll listen to God. Come on and let God lead you and let God guide you every step of the way. Come on, you'll find the right person. Come on, and that person will be such a blessing to you. And you'll be such a blessing to them. And it'll work out and it'll be beautiful. But you get in a hurry. You know, it's like me saying, God, please don't come back before I'm 16 because I want to drive. And I turned 16 and God didn't come back. And, then, and I'm saying, oh, God, don't come back until I can get married. Yeah. You know what I was? I was an impatient young person that couldn't see past very far. Woo. But now I've got a teenager in the house and I got a. I got three other children in the house. And you know what they're praying? God, don't come back until I can drive. Woo. Thank God they're not praying about marriage yet. <laughs> I don't think you should be praying about marriage right now. Woo. Judah don't need to be looking at the girls right now. Ooh, and the girls don't need to be looking at Judah right now. Hallelujah. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Are you listening to me today? Amen. If you don't let God have his way in your life, you're going to have chaos. Chaos. Amen. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of destruction. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Amen. John chapter 14, verse 27 Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. He said, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. If your heart's troubled and if you're afraid of things, you need the peace of God in your life. Well, what are you saying, Brother Smith? I got to be calm, cool, and collected? I don't know. You read the Bible and tell me. I don't think there's any room for the opposite. Amen. John 16, 33 said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Romans 8 and 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. And peace. Amen. I've got, I've got many more scriptures here to give you tonight. I, I just want you to understand here. Come on. If you don't live for God, 
Come on, you're going to go from one chaotic moment to the next. And there'll be little, little spaces in between where you think, ooh, I can catch my breath. Everything's all right. But then, boom, there you go. Here comes another chaotic moment. Fear. My goodness. What's that song we sing sometimes? Peace, peace, wonderful peace. My goodness. You know what? You ought to be happy in God every day of your life. Oh, I woke up this morning feeling fine. I have heaven, heaven on my mind. Isn't that a song or am I making it up? <laughs> Hallelujah. The most wonderful thing that ever happened. I'm closing if y'all want to help me out. The most wonderful thing that ever happened to me was me getting the sweet Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And with that sweet Holy Ghost, there came a peace in my life. Come on, my countenance was changed. I just automatically knew, Brother Joy, that everything was going to be okay and that God was ultimately in control. Amen. I didn't have to answer no more questions because it was in God's hands. I didn't have to solve no more of my problems. God had it all. If you'll just live that way, if you'll just let God have it. Amen. If you'll just let God have his way. Amen. You... you Write this one down, John chapter 3, amen, the first several verses, amen, he's talking to Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again, of the water and of the spirit, Jesus himself told Nicodemus, you must be baptized in the water, and you must be have the Spirit of God in you. Nicodemus didn't understand. How can I, being a full-grown man, be born again of my mother? No, Nicodemus, that's not what I'm talking about. But he began to explain the Spirit of God, how that it was like the wind that blew. You can hear the sound of it, but you don't see the wind. Oh, you can see the leaves blowing. You know that something's causing it to move. You hear the sound, but you don't know which way the wind came from, and you don't know which way it's going. You know that it passed by you because you felt it. It's the same way with the Spirit of God. When you change your life, when you let God change you, when you decide that you don't want to be bound by sin anymore. That the devil can't hold anything over your head anymore. Amen. Come on. You can begin to cry out to God. Lord, have your way in my life. God, forgive me of my sins. I've done so much, God, I don't even remember what all I've done. But that's okay. You can say, God, forgive me of all my sins. Come on, and if you've got a notion to never do those things again, God's got something he can work with. Amen. But if you're not done with sin, come on, I wouldn't even bother repenting. Don't waste God's time. Well, if I can say that, <laughs> because God's not bound by time, is he? Don't waste your time. If you're not ready, don't waste your time. But don't be like some of these folks that they, they call on God when they're going to jail. They call on God when they got uh, in the hospital. Amen. Call on God while he may be found, the scripture says. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand here tonight. Jesus. Can we all pray? Can we all pray right now? Lord, let your peace reign in me. Let the peace of God reign in me.